Okay, now what happens when you get back from the range? You uh, have shot quite a few rounds and now you have a box full of brass that's dirty. It's got uh, primers in it. Um, and you must you must prepare this now for uh, a second uh, round. Now, as you can see on, on these brass over here, there's not much carbon on the outside of the, the brass, so there hasn't been, uh, so it's, it's, here you can see a typical uh, small horseshoe carbon over there and over there. That is to say that your, your case, uh, your, your chamber is very nice. So these ones over here are fairly clean, but the first process that you do now, once you've got your, your brass uh, that you want to reload, is you get your tray ready again and you just put your brass in there as many as you want or the full tray or whatever so you can load them up there. Now the first step that you do uh, from from here on is you get the primer out. Now please gentlemen don't use your uh, neck sizing or your full length sizing die to press the primer out. Uh, inside of these uh, cases uh, there's carbon in it and carbon is very 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 hard. It's, uh, it falls on the Mo scale as the same hardness as a diamond. So you can imagine what all that carbon that's inside here will do to your uh, hardened uh, button or, your, or uh, your, your, your button in the um, uh, in your die uh, it will just damage it and also the carbon that sits on the outside it will damage the inside of your uh, uh, die and you will eventually get scratches that's transferred onto your brass and that doesn't look good uh, and also you will have failures uh, like that so the first thing is you get your primer out and the way that you do that we'll go through that process is with a universal primer uh, a tool that fits basically any any type of, of brass it's got just got a, a thin little uh, or, a, or a longish uh, pin that goes inside there you put it in your press and with a with a uh, the, the, the the pin thickness for the specific case and you will just pop the primer out and then you will get something like that so this one here the primer has been taken out and in inside there you'll be able to see uh, there's a lot of carbon in there so that carbon must also be taken out and so on that note uh, gents please don't use your your premium uh, cutting tool uh, to, to take the, the carbon out, which is something like this, uh, you'll damage the cutting edges of this with that carbon there. Uh, so wh what you can do is if you've got something like this from uh, Lyman, that's a typical uh, nice uh, tool, you've got a, a carbon scraper that looks like this and it fits in there very precisely and I will show you how much carbon comes out of this one here and you can just clean it out so you scratch it and turning it out until it's nice and clean okay now there I've got all the carbon out on this one you can see there it's fairly clean um, and uh, now if I show you this paper here again, that is the amount of carbon that came out of that uh, primer pocket. So, and that is if you take it in your hand, you can feel it. It's hard. It's, it's not a nice smooth uh, piece. It, it, it's, it's rough, you know, so that will stuff up your tools. Uh, it will really damage it beyond repair you'll have to buy new ones so that's the next step that you do or the first step that you do is take your primer out 
And then uh, the next one up from here is then you clean your your brass. So you can take your primers out. Uh, so depending on what media you use, uh, for instance, if you use corn cob or uh, crushed walnut, uh, it it will not get right into the small little uh, crevices here in the corner to take the carbon out. Uh, it will clean it on the outside, shiny bright. Uh, it will take a fair amount of the carbon out in the inside of the neck uh, and it but it will be clean uh, the, the uh, corn cob will, will will clean it quite nicely then the alternative method to clean it and it will clean it thoroughly uh, inside and outside but it's it doesn't give you necessarily a very uh, shiny appearance is if you put it in an ultrasonic cleaner so it will clean it, it will clean it inside, it will clean out that little part at the back here, the carbon out, uh, it, it, it's a fast way, it takes you maybe about 8 minutes or so, and then it will be clean. Uh, another method, and that's the one that I prefer at the moment, is the one with a stainless steel uh, tumbler. It uses uh, small little stainless steel pins, it's inside water, uh, with a cleaner, there's a lot of, uh, I make my own uh, uh, concoction there with uh, sunlight uh, or some of your green soap, uh, some other cleaners, some citric acid, uh, some ascorbic acid. You know, so there's a couple of things that I throw in there, and that after about three quarters to an hour, this case comes out there sparkling bright, and inside the primer pocket, it's sparkling bright and clean. And the inside, it looks like a brand new piece of brass. So I like my stainless steel uh, cleaner very much. Uh, it does the job uh, very well. So once you've done that, then you've got uh, clean brass. And now you can start doing the things with your, with your brass. Now you can start resizing if you want to resize only the neck. Or if you want to resize uh, fully, uh, then only you start with the resizing of your brass. By that time you should know what bullet you're going to put in and seat it uh, and you must have your powder, the right volume of powder uh, with the right weight of powder to put in there. So these are the things that happen year after. So firstly primer out, clean it and then start with the processes of uh, resizing uh, either to your original specification, that's a CIP or your uh, SAMI spec. Or if you've got a custom chamber, you do neck sizing or you do partial neck sizing. Uh, so these are, are the things then that you do uh, with once fired or two, you know, fired twice or so. The other process that uh, is also very important and which I do fairly often, uh, that's at least about uh, every third time, some guys do it every time they, they shoot, is to anneal the brass. Now, if you do not anneal your brass, uh, brass work hardens every time it expands in your chamber, it retracts about uh, one thou. Now you, you uh, size it uh, back another, say, two thou, and with your expander button, it, it pushes it out again by um, half a thou. So that whole time the movement on the neck hardens the neck. So after three times, two times, three times, um, depending on, on, on your chamber again, maybe you're lucky if you can get four times out of it. That's the lifetime of your brass here that you will get a good quality shots, accurate shots, and uh, where you will definitely, most definitely not get any brass cracking or anything like that. If you do not anneal your brass, um, the lifespan of a case like this is uh, maybe uh, 10 times, maybe even less, 6, 7 times, but uh, it's, it's, uh, it's not very long. If you reload uh, your brass and you anneal like every second time or every third time, your lifespan of your brass will go right up to 
20 plus times. I've reloaded some of my 338 Lapua brass 25, 28 times, um, and that's a big blaster. And I haven't had a problem with that yet because I anneal my brass uh, very regularly. Uh, and so that's the lifespan differences between annealing and not annealing. And gentlemen, let me just explain to you, uh, you know, there's people that say you need to be a guru to uh, uh, anneal. Uh, it's, it's rubbish. Um, it's, it's a very simple process. There's art, you know, parts and, and uh, equipment on, on the market nowadays that makes annealing uh, very easy, very quick. And we will get to that uh, later in the, uh, uh, in the processes. Uh, to show you how to anneal your brass properly and um, once you've done that then it's ready to to resize in your die and then the rest of the stuff comes in and now you have to decide you know what bullet you're going to use okay so there's a flat base a lead core bullet that's a bonded lead core bullet it's a very good bullet for hunting purposes Here's a, a different bullet, same caliber. It's got grooves on the uh, outside or on, on the, so it's, it's the bore and the groove diameter that you see here. So that's uh, also very nice. It's got an expander a tip there made from brass. Uh, here we've got some some nozzler. Now, if you buy them already uh, mollycoated, they call them a silver tip. I mollycoat these myself. Uh, there's certain reasons why I mollycoat. And then you've got here some other brands of monolithic bullets. So that one is a monolithic bullet. This is a monolithic bullet. It's a 152 grand monolithic bullet. So that is something that you would use for uh, target shooting. Uh, it's not ideal for, for hunting. Uh, I have shot buck with, with this type of bullet, uh, headshots, and, and uh, it's, it's the same uh, difference. You know, they, uh, uh, they don't go far. Then here we've got uh, some Lapua brass that's brand new. So that's how that one looks like. So this one's got a hollow tip in the front and it's got some lead from round about here downwards and, and it's pressed and formed uh, for that lead. And then here is this uh, another one from Berger. So it looks very, very similar to those two. It's just the Ogive that's slightly different. So. If you decide you know what bullet you're going to use for what application whatever it's uh, for hunting or for target shooting or for long range then your selection of bullet is very important you for instance won't go to a, th a thousand meters with uh, this bullet over here uh, the ballistic coefficient of this is very low uh, it's not made for that this one here it's also not a long range bullet there's too much destabilization fun, uh, you know, with the grooves in it, so it will start to, de to deviate from your, uh, your bullet path. Uh, the long range type of bullets are typically these ones over here. Uh, you know, it's a solid shank. This is also a solid shank, uh, solid uh, brass bullet. This one from Nosler, they actually do very well on long ranges as well. Uh, but it's uh, it's a little bit heavier for extreme long ranges so they are good for a variety of different applications so before you decide what you're going to do with your brass and what you're going to lay it uh, pick a choose and see what you want to do uh, and then from there on you decide once you've decided what bullet you're going to use then the other important thing comes in. Now, you'll see here I've got my powder uh, stored in a can. And this can does not have a lid on it. So there you can see there's no lid on top here. Uh, the reason for that is 
I used some uh, potassium carbonate uh, in the bottom and even if you can see there there's water on the on the inside over there so there you see some water in the bottom of this canister here um, the great thing about this potassium carbonate is it uh, controls the humidity in a closed container so I know when I take this tin of powder out of this canister it is at 43 percent humidity and the whole can the can itself will with time get that same humidity as well this makes um, that your ignition and everything in your in your cartridge will be uh, consistent from one round to the other uh, so this is one one chemical that does a, a very good job in uh, giving you a consistent environment humidity environment now if you have a look today we're sitting here at uh, 59 uh, percent uh, humidity uh, we had some rain last night so the humidity is is, is a, a little bit high uh, but your window for loading is is between 40 and 60 percent the average of the powders that I've measured uh, humidity is uh, around about 49% humidity. So uh, bringing it down to 43%, it does push your uh, burning rate slightly up because it's a little bit drier. But at least you know you've got a consistent burning rate if you have your powder in a, a sealed container like this and it will be uh, you know at, at one specific correct uh, humidity uh, uh, measure so if I put this inside here you will see it will drop down to 43 uh, percent it takes a while about half an hour and then it stabilizes on that so that is then your selection and that is where you go uh, between your brand new your used bras the selection of the bullet that you want uh, and the choice of your powder this is a fast burning extruded power so that's a typical one for the 308 uh, you get some others that's a little bit uh, slower uh, that is made a little bit more for the heavy 180 grainers so one powder for a specific cartridge is not the only powder that you use you need to select your powder very carefully if you use the wrong powder uh, for your cartridge you might get an explosion uh, you can blow up your rifle i've seen that uh, so be very careful when you choose your powder uh, in the load uh, for your your uh, cartridge uh, that you're using there so that is the basics or the basic equipment uh, that we're going to have a look at how to marry the whole lot from the beginning to the end where you sit with a complete round that looks like that eventually so it, it's um, it's a bit of a process in some cases normally it's just the beginning uh, where you ha where you have new brass to uh, do all the, the, the work and the, and going through the processes of uh, primer pockets and inside uh, uniforming and and so on and then also cutting length on your uh, used brass is also important the whole time to get that to uh, specific length um, when we get to that I will explain why it is important to use uh, a cartridge or a case that has been cut to one precise uh, specification on length so that is that is it for for now uh, I hope you've learned something about the processes uh, this is not detail we will go into detail with each and every single process here and explain to you how to work what to do what not to do so until the next time thanks and goodbye